Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at not one, not two, but three massive updates to three different emulators. The emulators we're going to be taking a look at are Citra, the 3DS emulator, RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, and Xenia, an emulator for the Xbox 360. All of these updates are hugely significant both for compatibility, performance and visual fidelity in any of your emulated games. To kick things off, let's take a look at Citra, the 3DS emulator where they have delivered us a brand new updated Canary version that is going to make a lot of Pokemon fans happy. So no, your eyes are not deceiving you, thanks to the hard work of one of the very talented developers over at Citra, one of this emulator's most long-standing bugs or issues is finally fixed. With the brand new implementation of an LLE or Accurate Audio subsystem, this of course now means that Pokemon X and Pokemon Y are now considered playable on this emulator. Now while yes the game is considered playable, this brand new LLE subsystem also makes the emulator perform much much worse than it previously did. While you do not have to use this in games that do not require LLE accurate emulation, any games that do require it are at this point in time at least going to suffer very badly with poor performance. In the gameplay footage you have been watching so far, you may have noticed that I am only running at anywhere between around 6, 7 and generally at a maximum of 8 frames per second using this new LLE system. The reason for this poor performance is basically because only one developer made this entire audio system and it has basically not been optimized at all at this point in time. Instead, it is aiming to be as accurate as possible and while yes, they are going to make lots and lots of optimizations, the build that you guys most likely have hands on with right now is probably performing much much better than this preview build that I was given by the Citra devs. Not only is Pokemon X and Pokemon Y fixed in this brand new Canary version and with this brand new audio subsystem, but tons of other games that previously suffered with audio issues are now booting and much more playable than they ever have been on this emulator. As with all work in progress things though, it's going to take time and optimization and a lot of help and guidance from you out there in the Citra community, but hopefully in the coming weeks and months we will see this LLE and hopefully the faster HLE audio subsystem for Citra get vastly improved and much much better game compatibility. For anybody who is interested, down in the description of this video I will post the actual FAQ or Frequently Asked Questions blog. In that blog you will find pretty much any answer to any of the questions about the development of this brand new audio system for Citra. 90% of the credit and thanks for this brand new audio system really has to go to Wileli. Hopefully I didn't butcher their name too much, but they spent basically over the last year of their spare time completely developing this brand new audio backend from the ground up. Speaking for myself and probably for the entire Citra Pokemon community, thank you very very much. Moving swiftly on to our next topic, let's take a look at RPCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator, where we have seen a significant performance and compatibility update. So for any of you RPCS3 fans out in my community, you may already be aware of the fact that this PS3 emulator has been undergoing a very significant FIFO backend rendering upgrade. As you can see in the gameplay footage of Persona 5 running on this emulator and utilizing its 60 frames per second patch, we have seen significant performance uplifts in this emulator. Now while on my own current system I am not able to maintain 60 frames per second, I have indeed seen an absolutely enormous performance jump in this and many of the other performance demanding areas like right here in the subway or in many of the school districts. This this is going to mean that for anyone who is struggling with performance, especially so reaching 30 frames per second, you are going to be getting a much much better performance. 
Now, not only has Persona 5 seen absolutely huge performance jumps, but many other games also have. For example, as you can see right here in Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction, we went from getting around 4 to 5 frames per second in this introduction area when looking at the city, to jumping up to around 15 frames per second at worst, and generally staying in and around 30 to 40. For anybody who's familiar with the future series Ratchet & Clank games, you will be aware of the fact that they run at a dynamic FPS cap. This basically means that if you are able to maintain 20 FPS or over, your game is going to run at 100% or 1x speed, meaning that you are going to have a very, very good gameplay experience. In the next few days and weeks, we are going to see even more updates merged that are going to make this game, Tools of Destruction, even better. For example, right now in the master version of RPCS3, this game currently crashes whenever any of your weapons get upgraded. There is currently an update for this emulator getting ready to be merged that is going to completely fix this issue and many other visual and performance problems. Not only is this Ratchet & Clank title seeing upgrades, but the HD remasters of the the PlayStation 2 Ratchet & Clank games have also seen an absolutely enormous performance and visual fidelity update. For anybody who would have watched my videos in which I covered this game probably about two and a half months ago, you would remember that in this title and in any of the PlayStation 2 Ratchet & Clank games, I suffered with absolutely horrendous performance drops, especially in busy urban areas just like this one. As you can see in the gameplay, I am now being locked to a consistent 60 frames per second, a performance update of well over 300%. Now, while I am mostly showcasing these Ratchet & Clank games, mostly because they are some of the most demanding games both on this emulator and on the PlayStation 3 platform, many other demanding games have also seen performance increases, for example, The Last of Us and Red Dead Redemption. While those two titles I just mentioned are getting performance increases, they are still unfortunately very unstable in this emulator at this point in time at least, and still cannot be considered playable. It's not only performance updates we've seen, we've also seen significant compatibility improvements also. For example, we have seen a host of updates added for not only Kingdom Hearts 1.5, but also 2.5 HD, bringing these games back into the playable division of game titles for this PlayStation 3 emulator. With the impending release of Kingdom Hearts 3, there has never been a better time to play these games on this emulator. Many, many other bug fixes and crash fixes have also been added in RPCS3. For example, they have drastically improved the stability of the God of War titles on the emulator and have also brought Gran Turismo 5 into the playable category. As I'll do with all of the emulators covered in this video, I will have linked the Discord servers for each of these select emulators down in the description of this video in the event that you have any questions about the compatibility of your favourite games. Don't be afraid to ask any questions you could possibly want to know down in the comment section of this video, and if you need any additional help with any of these emulators, don't be afraid to join my own official Discord. Let's move on once again and take a look at our final emulator of this video video, let's take a look at Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. So while Xenia is, by my own self-admission, an emulator that I cover far too little on the channel, it has also been seeing significant updates in the past few weeks and months. For anybody who hasn't been around or hasn't seen any of my previous videos, Triangle, a brand new developer to this emulator, has been developing a brand new DirectX 12 backend. In this gameplay footage of Halo ODST, a game that has seen a huge compatibility boost and is now almost considered fully playable, this gameplay footage is also showcasing a brand new upscaling technology that has been added by this developer triangle. The original ODST resolution is generally somewhere around 1152 by 640 whereas in this upscaled image of the game it is now running at closer to 1440p and as you can clearly see by the visuals on screen, this new upscaler 
absolutely is a game changer for this Xbox 360 emulator. While obviously yes, we still have lots of graphical issues in many games on this emulator and you're going to see a lot of visual bugs especially in relation to shadows, reflections and some of the lighting in many of these scenes. The fact that we're running anywhere near over 10 frames per second in this title at this point in time is absolutely mind-blowing. While yes, these upscaled cutscenes look very, very good, it becomes so much more apparent just how much better these games are going to look. And while yes, the fact that I am dropping down into the low 10s and generally stay at around 20 to 21 frames per second in gameplay, it must also be remembered that this is the very first implementation of this upscaling technology and it is going to be optimised a hell of a lot more. Jumping forward into some gameplay and into one of the initial levels in ODST, you can see that my performance levels are anywhere between around 15 to 20 frames per second, but just look at how good the visuals are. Only about two or three months ago, this game wasn't even booting at all, and even at its stock resolution of 640p, we were struggling to get 10 frames per second, while now we're getting 15 to 20 when running at 1440p. You can even see that it's not the emulator that's bottlenecking my performance at all, it is actually the fact that my GPU is running maxed out at 100% at all times, and this GPU bottleneck that I am seeing in my system is what's keeping me from the 30 frames per second cap of this game. If I swap back to the stock resolution that this game runs at around 640p, you can see that I am easily able to maintain this 30 frames per second cap practically at all times. And when we consider the fact that as I've previously said, this game was not even slightly playable only two months ago, it really just does go to show how much work has been put into this emulator in the past while. Many other big 360 games are now also showing signs of life and have seen massive improvements to their rendering of 3D. For example, right here in Halo 4, you can see that it no longer crashes when you try to boot it. As with any of the other emulators I have just covered in this video guys, if there are any games you'd like to see me test or have any questions about them, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below and I will answer your questions to the best of my ability. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, I really do appreciate all of the nice comments and all of the likes you guys have been leaving on the videos in the past while and it really really does warm my heart to see you guys are just as hyped about all of these emulator improvements as I am when I cover them. So as I've already said guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.